What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and welcome to the fourth and final update of my downtown condo investment property remodel that I've been working on for quite a few months now and you guys have been seeing over on Instagram as well as in the last three updates where I not only showed you like the place as it was before to tearing everything out and also the installation of major fixtures such as the kitchen, the counters and also the floors in episode three but I also let you guys go ahead and vote for the choices over on Instagram whether it was the furniture, the countertop style, the color configuration and everything. And I've got to say, we all came together and actually did a pretty good job because I think this place is starting to look really, really good. So you might notice like in this general area, there isn't that much that has changed since the last one. And in terms of like some of the updates of what has been added since, it has really been focused on like the last 10% of every project, which is like the little fixtures, the electrical work, and like the smart panels um, where the technology is also integrated as well. And also other things such as like closet shelving from Ikea and trying to configure that in a certain way, but also stuff like shower glass and hardware and just like the little bits and pieces that really do add the finishing touches, which I'm going to show you as well. In addition to that, this episode is really gonna be focused on the technology and what we chose in kind of this tech loft style unit where I didn't wanna overwhelm it with technology being an investment property and a luxury rental, but at the same time, being a tech channel and a place that I do plan to film occasionally, having some of the cutting edge tech and small areas to really elevate the property to like a 2021 home. So some of the things I'm gonna show you is this electronic shade that really like brings together the highlight of the space, which I think are these beautiful large windows. Some of the other touches is also the baseboard heater control. It is in a nice like touch screen in like a modernized way because usually baseboard heaters are kind of attributed to like older homes and those kind of setups, but we were really able to modernize it not only by switching out the baseboard fixtures, but also through the MISAs and of course the the centerpiece of this entire remodel is the kitchen. And with the Fulger appliances, both in the fridge, the dishwasher, drawer microwave, cooktop, and how beautiful it is, as well as the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and cook a meal and show you some of the technological features and the elegant details of the appliances, as well as some of the countertop pieces that I decided to go with for the Airbnb unit. There's also TVs, of course, and that is a huge part because I'm actually standing in the spot where the very controversial media wall is going to be installed. It is actually only a 10 inch wide wall, but it's gonna have the same rounded sliding that the kitchen has. And it's just going to sit right here and it's gonna have a beautiful Samsung frame TV that also allows this nice like compact sofa that also has a bit of storage to just enjoy it in the middle of the space, but also have a fold out desk just for any like people who want to get some work done on the go. Um, and there's also gonna be a bit of a bar in the corner. But for now, we actually have a Samsung Serif TV here. And I gotta say, this thing looks really, really good. I picked it up a few years ago and it didn't really have a use, but if I wasn't to do that crazy wall idea, which to this day, I'm still a little bit like unsure of how good it's really going to look. It might be a terrible idea, definitely controversial then this solution right here actually makes total sense for a space like this where there wasn't really a spot for the TV before. Of course, if you guys enjoy these home series and how it integrates with technology and interior design, make sure you drop a like on this video and let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And also make sure you subscribe to the channel because I have the biggest home series to date that is going to kickstart right after this. But without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the tech that is integrated in this place before we take a look at some of the small changes and hardware that has been added since the last episode. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the electric shades. And this is something that I've skipped in past projects to save money and to be honest, ended up regretting. There's a lot of options out there, some of which are more economical than others. But in this case, because there is hardwired power in the bulkheads, it was relatively easy to add on. The one that I have in this unit is from a company called Somfy. And I know there's other options such as Hunter Douglas and Lutron, but those seem to be on the higher end of price. And I would say that this comes in right around the middle. By going with shades, not only did I take it down from 10 blinds to about four of them, I can easily raise or lower the individual shades, or I can also set it to number five, which has all of them moving at the same time. And once they've been calibrated by the installer, as you can see here, it all works very uniform. 
If you do want to spend a little bit more money, there's also like Wi-Fi options out there that allow you to like program it or even have like a solar panel that is able to set a certain schedule depending on the light that is hitting it. But for a unit like this that is on the corner and definitely gets a lot of sunlight, being able to control the shades is a huge addition. But I only did it in the main area and skipped it in the bedrooms which have individual larger shades because those aren't controlled as often. Personally, I didn't need any Wi-Fi control for this unit, so I just kept it simple with a simple remote, but if you do want to add it in the future, they do also sell like a Wi-Fi hub. This next tech product is one that I feel like doesn't exactly break the bank, but it's like a rather economical way to be able to bring your old system up to date. So for this unit, there's actually no air conditioning, and because I live in Canada, there isn't like any extreme heat, so the unit has baseboard heaters. And even though those are usually attributed to like older homes and don't exactly look great, not only did I go ahead and upgrade all the baseboard heaters in the unit, but by adding the MISA Smart Thermostat V2 for electric baseboard heaters, it really did modernize it and give it like a smart home experience to the baseboard heating. Just from a look standpoint, I think it looks awesome. It has a nice touch capacitive button and the light up indicators of like the target temperature, but it also has like the temperature sensor, of course, that is built in and you can adjust it very easily. But at the same time, you can also utilize the app via Wi-Fi or NFC to set certain schedules and smart functions. You can also adjust like the different zones within your unit because in this case there are baseboard heaters in the main area as well as the individual bedrooms. The baseboard unit of this thermostat costs about $100 but they do also make models that are compatible with like AC units for example so it just depends on what you're looking for but as I said in this unit it had like kind of this old style baseboard before with like the traditional thermostat and the way to really bring it up to date with what it currently was set up as was to just get new baseboards which were relatively inexpensive as well as the MISA thermostats for all the rooms. So when I was looking at this unit, the reason why I liked it so much is because even though it came in at a price point of a typical one bedroom unit in downtown, it actually had two bedrooms, but only has one bathroom. And this secondary bedroom is actually a pretty decent size. Not only is it able to fit a full size bed with a nightstand or even a queen size bed if you eliminate that nightstand, but there's also a bit of a cove right here that allows you to fit a full size dresser like this. So the person living in here still has plenty of storage to work with. So it is like a secondary bedroom, but it still has plenty of great features, including more drawer storage like this, and also a view of where the sun comes up each morning. Right now I have an Amazon Fire TV here, and this is like a really great economical option for any students out there if you just want like a bedroom TV that you may not use as much as your living room TV. And the reason why I like this is because it comes in at a price point of under $300. The Amazon Fire TV interface is really nice to navigate. It is powered by MediaTek, so it's super fast and responsive. And it's actually one that we reviewed on the channel. But yeah, here's the 43 inch model. There is also many other size offerings as well, and also the Omni one. But this especially at its price point under $300 has really impressed me and these two lights right here are ones that I picked up just to have like as a bit of an accent they're definitely not meant to light up the whole room and they do not by any means they're still a lot more dim than I expected but overall in this room itself the whole point was not only to make it feel a little bit bigger but also utilize the space as well as possible even though I did have to move the washer and dryer into the closet of this room to make the kitchen essentially double the size from a visual perspective. I think this Rove Concepts dresser here looks amazing, especially with like the white glass top. The light just bounces off it so nicely. And I think for like a secondary bedroom, I mean, I would totally stay in here. I think it looks great and there's still plenty of room for like a decent amount of storage while feeling very cozy. So as a bit of an update on this bedroom, I got to say this is low key my favorite one. I feel like the walnut bed with the white farmhouse look in the back just looks so good. But I will admit there was one decision that I had to make that may not be like the best one, but I tried to make it work as much as possible. And I know some of you guys wanted to see it, and that's the fact that the washer and dryer is over here, literally inside the guest bedroom. And I've had a kind of like back and forth on the pros and cons of it, but the most important thing was to make the kitchen a statement piece. And being a property that is going to be an Airbnb, I feel like it is nice that there is a washer and dryer because not all units have that, but 
At the same time, I didn't really have many options because flipping it over on this side would have kind of been in the same spot as the breaker panel, which is not really movable in a condo. But this was also where the ducting and also the water could be flipped directly from where it was before. So at the end of the day, this is like a pretty compact setup. It does stick out a little bit and I did try to integrate the cabinets to go right up to it to still give a really good amount of storage for a guest bedroom and some shelving. But I will admit the amount of space that you have to kind of come in here and do your laundry is a little bit on the minimal side. So hopefully it wouldn't affect value of resale too much because I do feel like the kitchen really was worth the sacrifice of having to do this. So now we're in the main bedroom and I feel like the accent wall with like the dark olive paint really does make a statement as a bit of a bold design, but at the same time, it feels very warm and goes in line with the rest of the place. The other bedroom admittingly does play it very safe. And originally I was hoping to go with like a contrasting color such as like a gray or like a darker color, but I figured after seeing it primed in white, it really did make that smaller bedroom feel a lot larger. So I decided to keep it white and here's where the color's being applied. I actually got this inspiration from Rove Concepts and some of their renders, but actually talking about the tech side of things, one of the most important things for any person is sleep. And you always want the best sleep possible, but especially in a vacation rental, I feel like a lot of times beds are just not that good and it's sort of either a used one or leftover one or whatever. So when we're kind of like furnishing this Airbnb and setting it up, I want to essentially make it one that I would personally love to live in. And a huge part of that is Helix and I want to give a huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video. If you guys have been watching the channel for many years, you know that I love Helix products. I've actually been sleeping on a Helix bed for five years now. And over the last year, I've also given some to my friends in the makeover series. And now the Airbnb, we have the Helix Lux and also the Helix in the guest bedroom. The reason why Helix is so cool is because they actually have a sleep quiz. So you can go ahead and visit their website and you fill out all the information about your height, your weight, your sleeping preferences, what kind of mattress you have at the moment and how you like it and it will give you a suggestion based on the mattress that they think would fit the best for your use case. From there, you can choose between the standard option or also the Lux option. And the difference between the standard and the Lux is that the Lux has a three inch topper just to add that extra like plush to it. And I think for an Airbnb, people are going to absolutely love this. And this is personally the mattress that I have at home as well. So if you guys wanna check it out for yourself, I'm gonna drop a link down below and you get two free pillows with that. And I actually really like the pillows. They're very, very like firm in the way that they hold their shape, they stay cool. And the best part about all this is that they actually have a 100 night sleep guarantee. So if you for some reason don't like your personalized mattress, then you can actually return it for free and they'll even pick it up for you at no cost. So on this side of the bedroom, we have the TCL 5 Series TV. And even though I do like the Amazon interface a lot more, I find that TCL has done a really good job in offering TVs that are a very good image quality at a great price. This right here is the QLED model, and even though it comes in at a higher price point than the Amazon TV, it is still significantly cheaper than like the QLED options from Samsung, for example. And as much as I would have liked to have put a frame TV in every single room, which was the original plan, I really do want to invest that money into my next series and save in certain areas where it just isn't exactly necessary, and putting three frame TVs in a luxury vacation rental is definitely unnecessary, but I did think about it for quite a while. And although I did think about putting like a console table over here or like some millwork along the wall, it just wouldn't really be that functional because right now you've got a good two and a half to three foot clearance in this kind of walkway to the other side of the bed. And I kind of want to keep it that way. I just didn't think it was worth like blocking off the space a little bit or spending any more money getting anything custom done for this wall. So yeah, just to keep things simple, we put in a TCL 5 Series TV that is QLED, really good value, and just had it mounted straight on here and plugged right in. So now moving on to the kitchen, on the tech side of things, I'm going to be going over some of the appliances that we selected from Fulger Milano for this kitchen project. 
When it comes to selecting an appliance lineup for the kitchen, it really does come down to what you're looking for. So in this case, I wanted to have a drawer microwave because before it was above the stove and I didn't really like that. But also by separating the oven and the range, give it a really seamless look that blends all the way across the long perimeter. On top of that, everything that could be panel ready was panel ready just to blend in with the millwork of the kitchen to give it a nice and elevated look. All of the design and features from Folger really did come together in this project. So the first product is the fridge, and this is a 30 inch model that is panel ready and is actually where the washer and dryer used to be, and you can see it is now beautifully integrated. The first thing that I really noticed is just how well built this fridge is. It does have the twin cooling plus technology, the back is stainless steel, and there's also LED lights on each side that keep it very nicely clean and illuminated. Something that I also noticed is that it is extremely quiet and pretty much silent when it's operating. There's also a large touch capacitive button that is easy to reach on the bottom that allows you to set the temperature accordingly and it all displays in the information very clearly. On the bottom you do have the freezer drawer but overall you can just see how well built this fridge is and how good it looks in the integrated panel. So now let's go ahead and make a quick pass to lunch while I'm talking about the cooktop in this unit. So this right here is the Fulger 30 inch electric radiant cooktop and in certain units in the past I've had um, gas and in this case it is electric so I figured it would be nice to go with like the most seamless and easy to clean option possible. All the buttons and controls are very easy to read and are right in the middle and there's also a nice locking function so you don't accidentally activate anything but the peacock dials allow you to get a very specific setting based on the temperature that you need and everything is just easy to navigate when it comes to like boiling water and stuff there's also an automatic fast boil function which is very handy the power of each surface is very well indicated based on the number setting that you have it at and it also has timer display functions and the acoustic buzzer that is all built in but just looking at it it is just such a simplistic cooktop and i think it looks amazing especially with a nice silver trim that goes around it So now that we're done cooking, let's go ahead and talk about the dishwasher. And as you can see, this right here is a panel ready one, so it looks like a blended cabinet as soon as you walk into the unit. But if you go with like a stainless steel model, that looks really good as well. But all the buttons are on the top and you have specific settings of 16 place settings, but typically I do just run it in the automatic mode. Some of the best features include just a general build quality, the stainless steel interior, the way everything is like nicely organized, but most importantly, just how quiet it is at just 4 45 decibels. Especially in like a mid-sized condo unit, the kitchen is like a huge presence in the space, so it's important to have great appliances that are not only functional, technological, but also very quiet. As someone who is in consumer tech, it is always cool to check out products in different industries, such as appliances as well. So now we're in the closet section of this bedroom and to be honest, I didn't really have a plan for this area for quite a while, literally up until like the last two weeks. When all the drywalling and stuff was being done, I had them take the edges all the way out and kind of bring up the height as well to line up with the door and just take out the sliding doors that were in there before. Because to be honest, sliding doors are not always the most functional, but in such a narrow hallway like this, I feel like it does still make the most sense. But for the sake of like an Airbnb, instead of having people like fiddling with the sliding doors all the time and them breaking and that kind of stuff. I figured why not go with like an open concept IKEA setup and this is the Ardval I believe from IKEA where you can kind of customize it depending on the type of setup and the best part about it is that it is customizable to some degree in terms of its length and width because you can use like the pipes for the hangers and everything and adjust them accordingly. So I ended up purchasing, I think, six of these and had some installed in the guest bedroom, but I also have four of them right here and both sides are identical. There's a column on each side that has drawers, some shelves, and just some general stuff that you can have some folded clothes on because this main bedroom doesn't actually have a dresser. But on top of that, there's also a hanger on each side just to be able to obviously hang some clothes, jackets, and everything. And a reason why I decided to keep it completely open is also like, a lot of times I might go to a hotel and I'd hang my clothes up in like the closet or something and to be honest I'll forget to grab it afterwards so by leaving everything completely open nobody's gonna forget anything but it's also very easy to access and also tuck your luggage away if needed without having to worry about any space because at the end of the day 
This is as wide as it is to walk way into the bathroom. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. It was actually really, really cheap considering how many pieces that I purchased. I believe to do all three of these closets, it was about $1,000 in Canada, which in the US is like under $800. And typically if you were to do like completely custom cabinets, it could cost like almost a thousand per closet just to be able to get like uh, still like MDF material, nothing especially crazy. And especially if you get into like wood or higher end material that is typically used in like the kitchens as well, then you start to get into the thousands. I was honestly really lucky that a lot of the pieces that we needed here were already in stock because that seems to be a huge issue with Ikea. And the only thing that I wasn't able to get was the actual hanger rods. So I just went to Home Depot, grabbed some for 10 bucks and installed them for now. And it actually just like looks really, really good. Um, I think it looks pretty well customized and although it's not like the best quality out there, it definitely gets the job done. So the next piece of tech that we're taking a look at here is a Samsung Serif TV. And this is by no means like a new product and it's actually one that I picked up used about two and a half years ago and didn't really have a use for it aside from it being a good deal. And the reason why is because there's a bit of a crack right here on the plastic frame, but because I'm just using it to like transport around to different spaces and when we're filming off site, I honestly don't really care that much, but it's actually been on sale quite often. And I think for anybody who is trying to achieve like a really nice studio look or like a seamless design, this is absolutely perfect. But for a lot of people out there, this just looks plain weird. And it kind of isn't very functional in the fact that you can't have like any storage underneath. But I think for this setting specifically, even though it was meant to be temporary, it looks really, really good. It has a smart TV that is built in. The remote is right here and it's very easy to kind of navigate around. I personally really like it. I feel like the image quality is pretty decent, but you are kind of paying for the novelty side of things as well. And in terms of like the frame itself, it comes in a white and also a blue finish. But I wanted to show you guys this because I'm personally just a huge fan of like Samsung's kind of quirky TVs. I do have the Samsung frame, which is very popular, but I also did go ahead and pick up the Samsung Zero, which is the TV that rotates vertically and has a speaker built in, just because once again, I got a pretty good deal on it. But now let's actually go ahead and show you guys the installation process of the wall that is supposed to go right here that has been very controversial, but was kind of my original vision for the space and how it looks with the Samsung frame TV mounted. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm really excited to see that this is finally done. It definitely did take a little bit longer than expected. And with any project, that just seems to be the case, but I'm trying to get a little bit better at it. But I think the end result here is beautiful. There were a few hiccups in the beginning and there was a few like question marks throughout the project that I wasn't really sure about, but I've got to say like the floor choice was good. The kitchen looks really, really nice. And the double waterfall countertops not only elevates it, but in addition to that, we were able to open it up completely and also integrate some of the appliances nicely. And the bedrooms I feel like are also a pretty simple upgrade. All I really did was change out the floors, the baseboard features, and also added an accent wall. And the closets, even though it went with like a more economical approach of Ikea, instead of the same stuff as the kitchen, I just felt like for an Airbnb unit, it didn't really makes sense to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to do all three of the closets. So yeah, I hope you guys kind of like the blend of like things that are on the premium side. So when I do decide to sell it, it could make a lot of sense, but also some areas where I went with like a more economical option just because it may be temporary, it could be changed in the future, and also in areas with heavy wear and tear, it might be something that I have to replace relatively often or modify down the road. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode four. I'm now gonna move over to giving you guys like the full tour of like the kitchen, the living room, the bedroom, and more. And I'll see you guys in the next video.